Welcome to the Popcorn Junkies. Welcome to Popcorn Junkies. This is a review of a movie called True Things, um, and this stars Ruth Wilson and Tom Burke, and pretty much that's all that stars. Um, yeah. It's really a double header, and then there's of course the parents of Ruth Wilson's And her friend who got gets of the job. Yeah, absolutely. It's directed by Harry Woodliffe, that you would for be forgiven for thinking is a man, but it's not, it's a woman. Yes. Uh, a, a film and a television book. director. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, this is based on a book. So this, how do you describe this film? It's, uh, I suppose it's a, it's about a woman who essentially is rudderless and lost yeah. in her life. Yeah. She works in essentially like an unemployment benefit yeah. office. Uh, she's on the coast in a sort of dilapidated coastal resort. I think, well, no, in fact, she was in Thanet, but then we seem to be on the coast a lot. Is Thanet on the coast? I don't know. I, I was fascinated by the actual area. Yeah, you love decrepit seaside resorts, did, don't did you? Did you know it wasn't Scarborough? I don't know where it was. I mean, it starts with her in a dream, doesn't it? She does a lot it's of dreaming. It's quite a lot of dreaming, yeah. A lot of fantasy. She's yeah. a very sexualised woman. She's, yeah. uh, she's, you know, clearly desirous of a relationship of yeah, some form. Yeah. She's got she, a lot of needs, let's just say. And that. she's got a lot of issues. Um, issues and needs. Yeah, so it starts with sex, um, and we discover that that's sort of uh, a dream or a fantasy of sorts. And I suppose the thing about this film is it's an incredibly impressionistic, abstract, poetic film. Yeah. It's it's shot, you know, again, it's pr it's projected in a sort of four by five I love kind of that square, ratio, that's which kind of cool. focuses you in on the on the emotions, doesn't yeah, it? it? Sort of takes yeah. you right in there. Um, she lives in a sort of dilapidated flat. You know, she's got a friend at work. She's clearly in trouble at work. She's often yeah. late. Yeah. She's. I mean, right from the beginning, she's in trouble at work. Yeah, isn't she? yeah, absolutely. And and you know, some lovely sequences right at the beginning held an extraordinary close. I mean, the thing about Ruth Wilson, she's got a remarkable face. She has. She expresses everything in her eyes and, yeah. and uh, yeah. her mouth. I mean, she's got an amazing. So she's in a dead end job. She gets nothing from it. No. It's it's, it's lacklustre. She's. But then you know, one day. But I think and I think in a way it. that you know I found that it really spoke to probably so many people who feel that they're in a sort of humdrum daily grind. Oh, absolutely. Of a boring job with horrendous bosses. Yeah. What else is there in the world? Yeah. And so she stumbles across. What else does she stumble across in the world? She stumbles across a charmer. That's what he is. Played by. Tom Burke. Tell us about Tom Burke, Mum. Tom Burke, he's got white hair in this film with the Cockney. Yeah, that's weird. I found it so strange hearing him with a Cockney accent. No, I, so I always I, think of him playing posh parts. Uh, I suppose so, yeah, except I think I've heard him before playing Have you? Play a Cockney. And he's a sort of, he's a charmer. He is, we, we, but he's rid of us too. Mm, yeah, I mean, well, he's just I come mean, out of prison. He's just come out of prison and, and we sort of don't know his background, but it becomes sort of clear as the film goes on. And they have, you know, they meet. Well, it's become sort of, what I was going to say, it becomes sort of clear that they're both very similar. Absolutely, yeah, no, you're right. Sort of on opposite sides of the, yeah. the law, but in opposite ways, they are yeah. both rudderless and not knowing what, yeah. what their focus is or what they're after in life. Yeah. I mean, I found all of that. Her need is more extreme than his need, yeah. in the sense that, um, and maybe this is rushing on a bit too mm. much, which way stop me, but whenever she comes on a bit forward to him, he blacks off and steps back. That well, frightens him, doesn't I it? I thought it was quite arresting. I mean, the, you could argue at certain points in this that, hang on, this is moving too fast, would this really happen? Yeah. And then another part of me thought that even the reality of what was happening for the characters was slightly fantastical. Yeah. And I think it's a film that blurs the boundaries yeah. between what's really happening but between what's really happening and what's happening perhaps in our imagination yeah, or in no, fantasy. I, I, I so for really example, that. there's that very opening early scene, which is in the trailer, where he tells her to take her tonics off and they have sex in a car park. Yeah. I always think about the practicalities of these things. Yeah. And I think, well, surely someone would have been parking yeah. at some point and they'd have seen this. But then what's clever about that scene is it's sort of intense. It's right at the beginning yeah. one thinks one goes with horror. But then there's a bit where she moves too quickly and he's very caring. He touches yeah. her head and says, oh, no, no. Well, that's after he's banged her head. Well, yes, but it wasn't his fault. <laughs> he's a bit rough with her. Well... I didn't like it. I, I mean, I have to say, I didn't like him. From the, he was a bad one from the get-go. Oh, get -go. he was a bad one, definitely, yeah. Why did she not see that he was a bad one? Because, oh, come on, she didn't care. He got a charming grin. Yeah, he did have a charming grin. He had a charming grin and he had a sort of way with it. So he, he, and so... he sort of said things like, you're lovely, you. Yeah. And, you're, and every time he said something like, oh, you're funny, you, do you notice that one? Yeah, yeah. And she said, am I? Yeah. And it's almost like her life was being described by this charmer. Mm. But she'd never had it described before. I found, I found her, I I found her heartbreaking at times. I did. Well, I mean, I found her heartbreaking all the way through it because I saw within her, obviously a father of four daughters, you see within her what you worry your children might go through, which yeah. is we all go through periods of loneliness. Yeah. We all go through periods of ennui, you know, not knowing what exactly it is that our purpose is and yeah. finding ourselves in a bit of a hole or in a bit of a repetition, you know. 
and and I, I, you know, it, it, it managed to avoid almost emotional poverty porn in that. It stayed, yeah. do you know what I mean? It could have gone really deep into it could, that. It could, yeah. especially considering we just meet her at this yeah. point in the life. We don't know what's happened no. before, do we? And I thought it was an incredibly unveiled performance because oh, she looked God, haggard, yes. she looked tired, she dressed down. You know, she re really inhabited the character. She was really what she was in a bed sit, you know, yeah. just making ends meet. It, this wasn't like a Hollywood actress or a top actress no, playing down. No. It was, It was real. She was uh, so needy. Yeah. I mean, as, even as the audience, didn't you feel her so need? So needy. Yeah. And I mean, her, her longing and her yearning yeah. for it to mean something. Yeah. And then when he was clearly beginning to sort of take advantage and sort of give up, you know, bullshit her and, and yeah. become unreliable. Yeah. You know, you got, I felt really protective of her. Yes, I did as well. But at the same time, I mean, I've known quite a lot of people like he is. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, she'd do things like lend him a car and then it wouldn't return and mm. sort of, all the time on the edge of being like, um, against the law. I, I yeah. mean, not you never really get a sense of what he's up to. No, you we don't. like his character in The Souvenir. Yeah. You don't really know. Yeah. He always plays a sort of Miss Walter Mitty. Yeah, yeah, a bit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it is, yeah, absolutely. and you sort of sense, is he going off? Is he taking advantage of her? Is he about to nick her money? There's always the feeling that he's about to do something worse. I mean, interestingly, yes, that's very true. all around the country, interestingly, he doesn't know in the end, does he? I mean, no. if you think about it, on balance. No. He, there's one... I mean, I... Yeah, sorry, go on. Is, is this a spoiler review? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, because it sort of builds up to the fact that it, are they on, are they off, are they on, yeah. are they off? And at some at one point, just before, I suppose not that far from the end, he invites her to his sister's wedding in yeah. Spain and, and also asks her to marry him. Well, that was very odd. Well, it was because she doesn't know how to respond. There were moments of intimacy that were you know, quite difficult to watch sometimes. It's quite explicit. They're not massively explicit. No. Um, but there was a particular scene where they went wild swimming and they were, they were, and I thought the really powerful scene was where she put, the one moment she released herself or made herself vulnerable and leant against his back and he pulled away and said, what are you doing trying to get inside me? Yeah. I thought that was a chilling I did. and really real moment because in a sense they articulated what a lot of relationships are like. Yeah, well, exactly. Where one person wants it and the other really doesn't. Exactly. And the point yeah. was that, it. I mean, for that, for him to have that response to what was a very sort of intimate scene. Well, it, it was, but at the same time, it wasn't. I mean, they'd been having mad sex everywhere yeah, else, yeah, yeah. and all she did was lay her head yeah, against him, yeah. and that. She just wanted a bit more than just the yeah, sex. Yeah, but that was a warning signal for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Well, as <laughs> as a father, I'd say there are countless red flags <laughs> around this guy yeah. in this. But the first being when he sat down at the table where she met him at work, and he said, "I'll oh, come out of prison." Yeah. Um, I thought it was hypnotic, and I thought it was. Beautifully shot. Some people have said it's a bit too opaque as a film. You know, some of the critics have suggested that it it kind of it kind of skims across the surface. It's wishy washy. Yeah, it's wishy, yeah. and I don't mind that. I can, you can give me as much abstract out of yeah, focus I'm stuff I'm that mean. gives you a sense of feelings. And I mean, it's very you know, many of her scenes are unscripted. I mean, a lot of it is just her doing stuff and going places. Yeah, and I was thinking at one texting point, texting and stuff like that. Yeah, I was thinking at one point, my God, the two because it says more or less a two-hander, isn't yeah. it? That the two actors must so trust each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, the director's asking an awful lot of yeah, them, yeah. isn't he? Well, Ruth, Ruth Wilson and Jude Law produced this film, bizarrely. Oh, that's yeah, right, so yeah. Um, it's a really hard film to, to sort of, to sort of yeah. get a grip on because it's actually both stylistically and in terms of characterization, yeah. you can't actually hold them because no, someone said true. to you as you came out, what was the point? You know, where was yeah. it going? You didn't know where it was going. Yeah. And you could argue. I think it's down to what your sensibility is. A film not knowing where it's going when it's about the sort of ineffable truths of emotion and relationships, well, that's kind of what life is. That is what life I mean, is. None of us really know what's, where no, it's going. No, exactly. So you could argue that that's quite quite an honest reflection. I found I found it's, I found the way it tied things up a bit clunky. Yeah, I think it was right. A bit too neat. Yeah, a bit too neat. But at the same time, it would have to have been something like that. Either she had a revelation, and, and you know. Or, or she didn't. I mean, it, or it would just have carried on and on and on, yeah, wouldn't but, it? Yeah. He had no sort of. He didn't start behaving better. No. And in a way, neither did she. I think one of the things that maybe was quite challenging about it was I kept finding myself almost wanting it to be more conventional. Oh, did in you? terms of narrative, so that I could either dislike her oh, more or like her more. And in fact, it took no judgment on either. It kind no, of it just didn't. presented them as what they were. Yeah. And actually. The extent to which he could have been a baddie yeah. wasn't really delivered on. No. The extent to which she could have been utterly vulnerable and a victim yeah. wasn't delivered on either. No. Do you know what I mean? I mean, no, I, I agree with that. I mean, if I had a, one huge criticism, which isn't that huge, but it was a criticism, was that in an effort to sort of say, give us some of her backstory, they made her parent, parental thing incredibly conventional. Yeah. So we have these two parents who are banging on about children, boyfriends, mm. why doesn't she settle I, down? 
and going round and the father's banging on about vegetables. vegetables. And I thought sort of... I thought that was the clunkiest part of it. I, thought, I did. I thought it, it was any space that. between the two of them. Yeah, it didn't yeah. need that to stabilise it, did yeah. it? We'd already got the picture. Yeah. And um, I thought, I, what I would say, though, in, in summary, is, I mean, Ruth Wilson is absolutely stunning. astonishing. Yeah. She's she's just brilliant. I mean, you're, you're entirely on her journey, and I thought she did a really good job of it not being cliched when we went off into her land of fantasy yeah. and into her dreamscape. And, yeah. and I thought we did a good job, of, as I said before, blurring what's real, what's not real. So we were constantly guessing, is this what, you know, I, I came out thinking, is the whole film a, a remembrance of an ex? An ex boyfriend yeah, or, or something? Yeah, or like a, yeah, could be. Do you know could what I mean? be, yeah. What yeah. Was the, but there was one moment in the middle of it where she was with a dog. Well, that was a dream. No, she wasn't with a dog. Don't no, I didn't mean that. like that. I yeah. mean, she was kind of face to face with a dog. She was, and they sort of, they sort of, Hold on that scene with the dog leaning forward. <laughs> I mean, it is a film of many moments where you think, oh, this is really significant. And then you kind of go, well, why is it so significant? I think, I think those sort of moments, there was a bit in the shower, wasn't there, where you didn't really know what was happening yeah. but when she was on her own. I think, wasn't that to convey her sensuality with nowhere to go? Mm, mm. So it's bubbling inside her, isn't it? In her mm. dreams all the time. Yeah. And then... I wanted to scoop her up and look after her. Yeah. I, really I mean, did. there's a point in it where she sort of... She sort of gives up a bit on this guy, although she's very attracted to him yeah. and tries a different dating service. Because I was thinking, as it started, I thought, surely people in this day and age try different yeah. things. And that didn't work either, and that was very frightening, I thought. The scene where she was on Tinder, she met, she met the yes. guy. Yeah, I thought that was a curious scene. I think it it's terrible, isn't it? My, my sense of men was that I just didn't believe he would have been like that. But she she was too much and she was yeah. she was overbearing. Yeah. I mean she broke my heart. She broke my heart. She too. really broke my heart. Yeah. And I think if you see she this broke film. My heart more. No, no, I think she broke mine even more. No, no, me more. <laughs> I mean I would say it's absolutely worth seeing for oh. her performance alone. Yeah. And, and Tom Burke is very, very good, though I found him less there was less depth to his character. Well, yes, except that he does do a very good thousand, thousand years, thousand mile stare. Thousand yards when, stare. When he, when he does this thing of suddenly... Oh, he goes blank. Yeah. Hostile. And that is scary. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. why, but it's scary. It is scary. Yeah. And you see you see on in her face the realisation that he's pulling away. And, yeah. and that is just, oh, yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, so it was a pleasant surprise in many regards. And me. Yeah. So um, what would you score it? 69. <laughs> Is that for Why a do you reason? Laugh? Uh, 69. I'd probably give it 72. Yeah, the only Slightly reason I, I mean, I took marks off really was I loved the look of it. Yeah, I did. Um, was the parental thing, the, the fixing it in a. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then maybe they felt they had to do that, yeah. otherwise we wouldn't have known anything about it. Yeah, I mean, it was like the parental world and then there was the work world. I thought the yeah. work world was dealt with quite neatly. Yeah. Uh, but um, I just thought it was an incredibly sort of moving portrait of a. An ordinary woman and yeah. an ordinary woman's desires. An unmoored person. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.